On today's Friday podcast, Sids comes up with a tactic to flip the league title on its head. Uh, are bottles dropping out in the Premier League? Chris reveals a bruising encounter at Ladies' Day. And stay tuned for Susie Dent's definition of the corridor of uncertainty. Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast uh, with me, Peter Crouch, notorious SID with me as usual, and uh, and Chris Stark. Is everyone okay? Good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit stiff today. Oh, yeah. yeah I've had well, a, you bit, you had a bit, bit of a lively weekend. Yeah, we did have a lively weekend. Yeah, it was a friend's birthday, so we had like a couple's games weekend over in Ireland. And there was archery, shooting, clay pigeon shooting, a paddle. Uh, there was like a reaction game. You know like the F, the F, what the F1 guys do with the... Um, <laughs> Goalkeepers do it. Yeah, like the, uh, the, the, the lights. Yeah, the lights. We've done that. And then there was like cones, 10 cones laid up. And then there was like a memory game. So if you touch one, there might be a donkey noise. And then touch another one, it might be a cat. And you have to pair the noises up. You do this all weekend as, got, as uh, couples. Yeah, and there was points on it. And there was a trophy at the end. But yeah, by the way, I think since you're on. We actually come out on top. I thought you might. The Notorious I come out on top. Done. Yeah. But you do this with three other couples, right? There was... Five, five, five couples in total. So I think what Sids has created, because you, you've done this a few times yeah. since I've known you, you yeah. say you're doing a games night and yeah. it's competitive couple action. It was competitive. I, I, <laughs> is this not the new come dine with me that needs to be? <laughs> Sounds good. You know, obviously I, I originally invented come dine, come dine with me, didn't I? Of course you did. Uh, yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, this would be great. I think we should do it. So, so... Is it the same couples that take part? Or do new uh, on this one? It was yeah, but and you stick to your own wives. <laughs> <laughs> There's no keys in the part on this one. <laughs> no, it's just, just could be a way to mix it up, couldn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. On one of Sid's holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it all sounds like good fun and games. It was good, yeah. But I'm feeling it today. I've got oh, to say, yeah, yeah I'm, uh, yeah, I'm it's taking it out of you. The glutes are uh, the glutes. Are, my, ham, my right hammy is in pieces. It's yeah. so good. This. It's good. I've it's never good done. Fun. I've never it's thought of doing this. I've actually never thought of saying to my missus, "Do you want to? Do you, should we ask a few couples to go and just compete against yeah. them?" I've, competitive couples is a genius mm. idea. Yeah. It's, it it's was... almost like you're, you're looking for something more than just a relationship, aren't you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Can uh, what's your memory like? <laughs> yeah. So when you're when you're on Tinder, it's like you know, ask those questions. Like, you know, can you shoot a clay pigeon? This is it. Like, yeah. it would change dating if you chose your partner based on having to compete with them against other couples in everything. I think if a few, if a few could have swapped, there might have been a few that would have swapped their partners. Ooh, really? Maybe. Let, let them down. I, I would, Ab's quite competitive. So, we're, like, we, we rarely lose Christmas. You know, <laughs> articulate in our house is, you, you do, you know, there's a couple of, family members out there that would say different but we I'd say we're we're top are you a Scrabble fan uh yeah don't mind Scrabble not done it for a while though did you see the news this week about the new Scrabble that's come out it's oh. causing waves because uh well they, they changed it all have they they've changed it all Pete so it's I think the idea is and I don't fully understand the idea is to take some of the competitiveness out of it so you work in teams or something like that and I think well, you might, might no, well, I don't know if you no. might not be able to lose might be misquoting here mm. um, but a lot of people are saying it's gone woke oh god you see you're not allowed to compete anymore that's the problem <laughs> this is the thing at school it's like you know it has to be you know even if you're crap at something you have to you're involved aren't you you know which is great <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's great, but you know, it, it, even if you're you, crap, you still get a prize for being crap. Is that what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I don't know. It's like you, you need. I think you need a trophy. Everyone can play, obviously, inclusive of of all. But you do need a winner. I you was saying, yeah, there win. is actually yeah. nothing yeah. wrong. I think because you work on a match that is great to win. But there is nothing wrong with not winning. Yeah, yeah, mm. you know. But obviously, it'd be great to win. Yeah. I know but what I'm saying is like I agree with you in terms of sports days it's like there's a bit of a feeling that if not everyone can win no one should win whereas I think it's a good thing to let other people even if you can't win to let you know other people win and you and that be an acceptable situation yeah, you, get your medal that you have competing. some winners and losers you know yeah. well I just think that's, that's, that's real life isn't it? And, you know, it's dog eat dog out there isn't it it's like there are winners and losers in real life so we, we can get them ready for that in, in school. Well, welcome to the Friday podcast, <laughs> everyone, where everyone is welcome. And, uh, you're welcome. You're all winners <laughs> to us. Well, you've arrived here at this podcast, so, so you are winners in our eyes. 
I should get on with the Friday pod talking yeah. of winners and losers. <laughs> oh well, good link, good link. This is getting so slick now, isn't it? <laughs> I've been doing this a while now. Wow, I'm like a young best liner. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? What's the email address again? <laughs> I've got fucking no idea about that. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's. I've never known that. I've, you know, I've never known that. <laughs> But they get—they seem to get here. So thanks, thanks for keeping an eagle eye on it. <laughs> okay. What, where is it, Chris? Peter at Acast. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. I've relied. Do you know what every every kind of manager of a of a podcast or a team needs to need to top staff around them? I know, to, mate, you to, throw to me. Do you know what I mean? Oh. I throw to you, and you yeah. look after me in that area. Yeah. Can you, I show you this ladder, yeah. entry? Can I show you what you've caused, by the way? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Where is oh, it? It's going to be deleted. Hang on. I'm going to show you this guy here. Obviously, this is a bit visual, but I'm at Aintree, right? And I was DJing uh, Ladies' mm. Day last Friday. How was it? Which good, good fun. Yeah. You know, it's always good fun. Everyone's been on it all day. So turn, turned up, um, DJing this big, I think it's the Red Rum Enclosure, you know, like a giant one. Mm. And uh, obviously, you get a few people holding up their phones and stuff like that. Yeah. But where I was DJing was really far away from everyone, so they couldn't shout. So this guy took to hand signals oh, brilliant. which really caught my eye I decided yeah. to video them okay. have a look at this boys I'll tell you through it this fella here okay have a look so okay, yeah. <laughs> let, me take, let me take let me take back to the beginning God, uh... what he's signalling here <laughs> and I had to explain this to everyone around me and the people who work at the yeah. is he's saying puddings is massive you see oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. puddings is massive. massive so then, he's doing the knife and fork with the big yeah pudding. and then he's pointing at me and going you wanker Barbecue. <laughs> he, he give you one of them after. I can only, I can only apologise. I don't even know where to begin with that. Did you just give him the thumbs up? And then what's amazing is he's given all these hand signals, but then also at the same time putting a thumbs up and like blowing kisses and everything. It was it's it's so confusing for everyone around me. Everyone around me going, oh, do you want us to get rid of him? That's go, what no, they were no, saying. No, he, yeah. he really likes. I was likes saying. <laughs> Because and it takes so much explaining every time. Like it's exactly it. The person's like, "Do you want him gone?" And I'm yeah, like, no no, "No, no, no, no. This can sound weird, but I think he's a he likes he's a the fan. podcast. He's yeah. a real big fan." <laughs> But there we go. So well, well apologies, one, apologies for that. Anyway, um, but I am leading now. Uh, I've gone from bottom. Shift. <sighs> been a big shift. Um, again, a shambles of a weekend. Um, the correct scores were uh, obviously. Oh, Arsenal nil, Aston Villa two, Newcastle beat Spurs four nil, and the draw, which is the point I got, was two two at uh, Forest Wolves. Um, obviously, the Sid World bonus point. Um, I had Son, mm. um, Sid's had Gordon, but you had Isak. I was at the game. Yeah, um, four nil. Isak was right up to the eighty fourth minute. Was the last goal scorer. That was for the Sidwell bonus, which Steve Sidwell introduced in the last podcast, yeah. just to confuse things. Mm. I thought it was a good one. Though. It was... I, I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. I was watching the game and I was in, I was invested for there the whole you game. Are. But you've actually had so many points taken off. You've lost points, haven't you, this year it's by the last... last minute goals? Or it's... I reckon you could be another five or six. Destroyed maybe? football for me this because. <laughs> <laughs> what it's there's literally no point watching a game of football for me. I might as well tune in from eighty nine minutes onwards. Mm. Just there's no point. The facts. Yeah. There's no point because I'm even sort of eighty seven, eighty six minutes throwing out a little message into the WhatsApp group saying, "Oh, this is exciting." It. What's the fucking point? Because it every time, every time, even in the Watford game, I, I dared send a text to someone going. To, we'd only get this back under Tom Cleverley. Two all against Southampton. I Little saw, run yeah. of decent games, yeah, yeah. right? Unbelievable last minute, wasn't it? No, last minute. Crouchy, there was six or seven minutes of injury time. It was the 98th, 99th minute, this yeah, goal. I heard it was listening to it on the radio. How's that allowed? Can't believe it. Only me. I swear every week it's done on purpose. <laughs> Yeah. It's a fucking disgrace. Is, it, is this a mini rant? Uh, yeah. No, it was like it's not. It's, a, not, it's, not, it's not like right. a mini He's rant. He's feeling a bit low at the moment. He's feeling a bit low because he was so far ahead. Oh, well, and I, we've pegged it back. I was and galloping. Yeah. You were galloping. It's well, like psychologically, I'm th- that points wise, you're on 15, Chris is on 14, I'm on 14. So there's only one point in it, but psychologically, I'm at the bottom. I'm at the foot of the table now and you're mm. at the top. Mm. I've done a Liverpool. That's squeaky bum time. I feel like I've done a Liverpool. We said this in the last Friday podcast. It's just couple of results where I'm standing up in the press conferences and the journalists are trying to get me to answer the questions, so sort of wording it in a clever way, but basically saying, do you think you fucked it? As your arsehole fell out. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great they just said As that you... to Klopp? Oh, yeah. 
and your just bottle because bottle. everyone's so careful. <laughs> Have you noticed how journalists are really careful about how they work? I always, yeah. I don't think we've ever dug down on how impressive it, it, certain journalists are at the way they word questions to a manager who's mm. just lost a game. Yeah. Do you know, the thing is as well, like I've, I'm around it, you know, obviously yeah. when we do TNT and, you know, the people like Jules Breach, for instance, who, who will interview, you know, a, a Klopp after the game when he's lost or Guardiola and they're always spiky, it's difficult. Yeah. And you have to ask the questions because people at home want to know the questions. Yeah. But you're the one sitting one-on-one. Oh, yeah. one on one the with pressure. Ha having to ask, and you have to ask it in a manner that doesn't piss them off. I'm really sorry, I can't remember this guy's name, but um, he said it to Jürgen. He said, well, Jürgen, sometimes all the stats can be going your way, but, you know, the result just uh, doesn't reflect it. Mm. And I thought that was so good, Ooh. because he's basically said... In every stat, you've what you've kind of won this game, but hasn't mm. said that to piss off so the fans. Yeah. Positive thing. Yeah, he, he said the positive thing, but it's basically said, you know, you've lost. Yeah. what's gone wrong? But if you ask that to him, he's never gonna. Well, even to the point where they could fluff up by going after the game, saying this, uh, say again, to say if it's Klopp, oh, you've obviously that's now two uh, defeats on the bounce. Um, team maybe looking a little bit nervous. How how do you find that? Is that another way of saying you've lost two on the bounce as your arsehole for it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you shitting it? Yeah, well, that's it. And it, it's all about the wording of the question. But what a weekend of uh, football. Like, with I just did not see that. When Liverpool lost, you thought that's the end of them. And then Arsenal wow. lost. Yeah. And then, obviously, like, obviously City are, what, two points ahead now? Mm. But everyone's going, oh, the, the title race is over. And when you look at City's games... You know they are the easiest of the easier of the games, I think, um, and and you can't you can't see them. But it is only two points, and we would never have called this weekend. No. I mean, it's two points, but it's this momentum that you see with City and and they've been there before. The goals and the experience, they they've you know this isn't their first rodeo, is it? They they mm. they got the know how, but mm. I know you I mean this is going to go for, down to the wire. I think I think it's going to go down to the last one. Well, not the last weekend, last second to last weekend, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think with the Arsenal Villa game then? Looking at that, I mean, Villa were phenomenal. I thought well, mm. Watkins hit the post mm. early on. Yeah. I suddenly thought, God, like this does look like it's going to go that way. And Arteta afterwards, without bringing it back to the press conferences, he, he was very agitated, sort of moving from side to side. Mm. The ass had fallen out. It, it felt. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's... Oh, please, it's, it's Crouchy, squeaky, when the manager squeaky. next comes to what, on the On the side oh, there. On well. the pitch. Well, it's, it has, has Straight your arsehole up. fell out. Wouldn't it be great if you were just as direct as that? Has your arsehole fallen <laughs> out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd never work again. But yeah, yeah, potentially, but... Obviously, what's Sean BT mm. up at Anfield? Uh, they stuck out on the wing. Yeah. <laughs> again. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, got tagged in that a lot. Yeah, they, yeah that kind of went... Went kind of viral, didn't it? Um, you, they've put you even closer to the camera now. I don't know if I was closer, I just was potentially shorter people. Than normal. <laughs> oh, mate, but mm. the angles. I yeah, mean, the angles was... are, yeah. It's a shit houseery. You've got to have a word with you the camera. You need to have a word. Some, I was told by Leo, shout out to Leo, you, you, yeah. you knew, obviously like the floor manager. And he said, I said, look, I said, I'm getting shit house here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bit in the chat. Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, you got to stop shit housing me, yeah. Getting the heat every week. And he said, apparently, like, obviously, I I've always been there. So my kind of, uh, the like, is it the mic volume? And uh, so, like, when they need to key to me and things like that, it's, like, in order. It's, like, mm. left, right, you know what I mean, centre. Mm. Mm. So you'll have left, centre, right. And if I don't, because I try to swap with Rio. Oh. I, don't, I don't know if you noticed on Saturday I came straight in because I was doing something else and I came in live and I just went I went in the middle so oh, I thought, I'll, I'll go there I just got in there early and I said I'm not I'll just go in there and what, what can they do then <laughs> so then he went to the break and they moved me back out <laughs> 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 stay on the wing and that's what he explained to me that that is the reason I'll be the, I'll be if you want to if someone wants to speak to me like a director or something in my ear then it'll be I'll be the right button. Yeah, but that's not a Peter Crouch issue. That's a Leo issue. Like yeah. he, what he needs to do is take his little bit of tape that says one, and switch it with a little <laughs> bit of tape that says <laughs> two. And then, uh, from the song. I mean, that sounds that sounds really easy. But he, he I think he just lost me in technical. Yeah. <laughs> Leo's give you some jargon, and you've got you fell for it. You can't switch me. because he can only. <laughs> otherwise, when he puts up his fader, you won't be there. <laughs> 
Yeah, but when he, he put down his fader and went, silly, <laughs> come for it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait to see the rooms rolling in again. I love it. It's free advertising. Yeah, I'm getting mugged off. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting mugged off. But it's all, you know, it, we'll see. We'll see what happens next time. Yeah, especially, you know, Jules Breach is, is, um, isn't is obviously hugely tall, is she? No. Um, so it would make sense, I think. They've just got to look at the formation with it. I mm-hmm. think whoever's playing you needs to put you... In more into the middle, I think. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Look, yeah, we'll yeah it's, it, it needs pro- probably a formation tweak. Mm. Right, the next part of the podcast is supported by Paddy Power. It's their big weekend fixture. Um, we do have Paddy Power boosts. Uh, potentially, we could phone a friend. Yep. I don't know if that's uh, on, on the on the cards. Uh, Paddy's points is massive. We've all used those. Yeah. Uh, and Paddy's predictor, we can get one of Paddy's expert traders uh, for a prediction. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, remember the big Paddy Power forfeit, uh, as you know, is still on. It's heating up. We're getting lots of suggestions on the socials. Yeah. Um, and we will we will address that uh, potentially at the end of this podcast or next week. Mm. Um, but the big fixture, Paddy Power fixture this week is Wolves versus Arsenal. Yeah. It's, uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking over this uh, last 24 hours. Great. And because I've had a shocking weekend again, no, no points, you know, it's, it, seems, no it seems the regular occurrence and I keep going with the team I think is going to win. So I'm I'm going to f- change it up this weekend. I debated doing this. Uh, I'm going to call this on straight away. I'm going to, um, I'm going to phone, uh, no, I'm going to get the Paddy predictor next week. I'm gonna put next on. week you'll go. Yeah. So can we get that in line please for me? Because <laughs> we need to give them the heads up. Okay, give him a heads up. All right. So, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the phone a friend next week. Are you? Okay. I'm not going to do anything. Really? No. I just think... I'm going to trust just, the process. I'm just thinking, what if you get a drift? What? What if you set a drift on memory release? Because I won't let panic... My panic button will be one of these lifelines. I one think, of, one of I think your arsehole's fell well, out. Well, it has fallen out. <laughs> it has fallen out. Of a possible, there was twenty-seven points available this week. Between us, we've managed one. Yeah, right. It's, and it's actually worse than that because of the Sidwell bonus. There was thirty points available. <laughs> when you say that, though, that I think that sounds bad. I looked at someone. <laughs> like, yeah, but I know it's not good. But I looked at one. I think Chris Sutton does one. The average old man. He does it every week, and he writes them down. He likes them. They give themselves five points for a correct score and ten points for you know. Yeah, but that, what that would mean is just that the amount of possible points available would be greater, and we would still yeah. have one or two. Yeah, 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 yeah true. So yeah, look, well, I'm gonna I'm throwing it out for next week, but staying on this one, the Wolves Arsenal is the is the game, isn't it? So, so you're going to tell me you're going for Wolves? Well. Like I've done before, I've gone with the one I think is going to win, yeah. and yeah, and reversed and it. I'm going to reverse, and I'm going to say Wolves on this one for it's me. An interesting tactic. I'm going to say Wolves. I, I'm I'm not going to say that Arsenal, the arse has fell out of Arsenal, hmm. but uh, they're going to lose. Okay, what score? Uh, I'm going to go for a one nil win for Wolves at home. They're good at they're good at home as well. More than you, I like what Gary yeah. Neal's doing there, and I can I but I think I can see this result happening. It's not a ridiculous one. So Is that must win. Feels must that win. way. A must well, win for Arsenal. for Arsenal. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean Wolves could end it there. Wolves are fifteen to two, so ten against your eighty-five pound return, uh, and Arsenal one to three. So obviously strong favourites, Arsenal. Mm. Mm. Um, well, you said you was thinking about this. So you... I don't, no, no, I think I think it's a good idea. I think you kind of got in ahead of me. I think we are fucking shite at this. <laughs> so let's just reverse what we're gonna do. I get that. What what. Uh... Is the main motivation for Wolves in this game to shithouse Arsenal? They're kind uh, of safe at the moment. I think they've got enough. I think they've got enough about them to, to like kind of to do well. Do you know what I mean? I don't think. They've do you got think to, to like want think... to spoil the party is the main motivation? <coughs> no, I think no, they, they no, played no, well the other day. Cunha's, no. Cunha's back fit, isn't he? he scored a couple yeah. on the weekend. Like, yeah. they, I think they look. I mean, they've got a good manager in charge. I know some of the people that work behind the scenes and, yeah. you know, they're confident. They're, they're a good side. He Great. just wants to finish as high as possible. It's three million quid every spot. Do you know Is that? it? It's three million quid really? to a football it club. It and the Wolves, they're in a bit of financial, um, not difficulties, but the FFP and stuff, they're, mm. they're on that cusp. So, But does that money side filter to you guys as players? Like when you view it from that position, I understand you probably get a bollocking from the chairman or a bit of a... Kind no, there's of, a bonus. There's a, bo- yeah, be a right. bonus. there's a bonus for every league. For every place, finish, yeah. yeah. And yeah. also top 10 will probably be more of a bonus. And I yeah. think they're only one point outside the top 10 at the moment. Oh, right. Um, 
Yeah, slightly yeah. leaky at the back, and they conceded double number of goals than Arsenal this season because they've been brilliant at the back of the Arsenal, yeah. um, which is a which is a problem. Um, which is why I I believe that Arsenal will win. I think it will be two 0 to Arsenal. You're going two 0 I see a uh, I see Wolves going up in this game, then Arsenal getting this back. I can't have a last minute Arsenal goal to just spoil what I actually think is the score, which is kind of a draw up into the last minute. So I've gone. Arsenal 2, Wolves 1. Okay. Mm. All good scores. Okay, then, if you do feel like getting involved in that, odds are correct at the time of recording. Please gamble responsibly. Uh, moving swiftly on to Crystal Palace versus uh, West Ham. Obviously, Palace, unbelievable performance. Wow. Um, you know, yeah. yes, they rode, rode their luck at times, but to go to Anfield and, and get a result like that, um, would, the, the enormity of it, especially, like I think, some of the stats with Van Dijk playing, especially at Anfield in, in the last few years, not many teams gone there and get get the points. Well, good result, wasn't it, for, for Palace, as you said. West Ham, oh, I just don't know. You just don't the know last five him. games, it's been a weird one, hasn't it? One one win, <coughs> and two losses mm, out yeah, of that. Poor result against the, Fulham. The last Missed two, chances against Fulham, yeah, didn't they, as well? Yeah. They've hit a dip, the last two. Mm, yeah, they have. Uh, yeah. Difficult one. Obviously going out to, well, Bayer Leverkusen. We'd, that, that, that'll be happening on Thursday. We're at time of recording. We don't know what's happened there. No. But uh, that doesn't look likely, I have to say. Um, I, I, unfortunately, yeah, I worry for them at the moment. They have got players back. Obviously, Paqueta's back in. Uh, he's a sus- suspension risk, isn't he? But I, I do think um, he'll play. Um, but yeah, I, I see this as a score draw. Uh, I've got this down as Palace 1, West Ham 1. I think that's such a good shout. Yeah. That is a really... <clears throat> that is a good. Well, I, the draw last week nicked me the point. Yeah, it was yeah. crucial, and I've 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 gone with it again. That feels right. Mm. I've gone for West Ham just getting this back now. I've gone for a West Ham two-one win. That would be squeaky bum time when it's one all, oh, and we're still worst, pushing. That's mm. the worst bit of this thing. Is it's worse than just your score getting right? Is knowing that one of you is currently it. right? Yeah. Well, I've currently got West Ham 1-0. Uh, but I feel like I want to back Palace now, so we've got a winner. Oh, yeah, okay. Which makes it... Yeah. So you've got the draw. You're going to go West Ham 2-1, yeah? Yeah, but okay, you're let's... really rolling the dice with this this week, aren't well, you? Well, let's yeah, change yeah. this up. Let's change this up. I'm going to go for Palace 1-0. I think the Eagles are going to do it at home. Another, another one now. So someone's going to get some points there. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right, moving on. Aston Villa, Bournemouth. Yeah, Villa, good form, hey? Mm. Uh, I covered them last week in Europe against Lille at home. They should have been out of sight, really. Yeah. Uh, the game's on its head now. Lille got a goal back, and then they go and get the result against Arsenal, which I didn't see um, with the predictions last week. So, mm. uh, Villa at home are good as well, aren't they? They're strong Villa at home. home. Yeah, They're Bournemouth let me home. down in that Luton game, so I just can't feel I can put my trust in Oh, really? You yeah, can't, you can't yeah, go with them. Just... Uh, played well against Manchester United, though. Yeah, true. You're a bit unlucky there. True. You took the lead twice. Uh, Dominic Solanke's in great form, isn't he? Mm. Goals galore at the moment. Yeah. Scored another great goal. Um, I just see Watkins scoring this. <laughs> yeah, mate, but then they, again, they got... Fire. Well, they've actually got the... Uh, yeah, the, re, the, the, the next tie is on... Uh, Sorry, the second leg is Thursday. Well, Thursday, yeah. <clears throat> which is obviously yeah, yeah. Would have been uh, the, the, the few days before this yeah. game. Uh, so you don't know what team's going to be put out for this. There could be some injuries. You don't know. Fatigue. It's on a Sunday. Um, Chris, what do you want to go for? Well, does it, it feels to me such an important game for Villa, just in terms of maintaining their position and Tottenham are close, right? Yeah. It's at them too. It's out of them too, yeah. And yeah. obviously, if it, was, it was much better for Villa on the weekend. You know, looking at the the, the, the weekend's fixtures, obviously, like Villa, you'd, you'd, you'd back Villa, I think, other than Tottenham. You know, Tottenham were poor. I'm going to go Villa three, Bournemouth nil. Oh, wow. You look nervy, and then you've gone for a bold statement. I am, yeah. All guns blazing. Uh, I've got 2 1 Villa. I've actually gone for the draw. Again, I think I would have gone Villa, but I'm going against the grain. Mm. And I don't see Bournemouth winning it, but I do see a draw. So I'm going to say Aston Villa one, Bournemouth one. All right, great. Good luck, gentlemen. Mm. Very competitive weekend, this one. Mm. Something for everyone. Okay, let's move on, because we've got uh, a load of messages in this week. Um, The first one is from Big Mike. Um, 
Big Mike with a kiss. He says, love the pod, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought you might like to know that Sunita is a whole City fan. Uh, supposedly, a former partner got her into the Tigers. Love Big Mike. Sunita was the one with the leaves, wasn't she, traditionally? Yes. She, yes, she wore the leaves. leaves. Was that yeah. on like... Britain's Got Talent or something? Uh, or was it like a premiere or something like that? I think it was something... Was it a... Mu I think it was... I she think, I know, it was a music video many years ago and then she wore the leaves again oh. on the X Factor or one of those shows. Was she with Simon Cow? I think she was, wasn't she? But I'm not 100% sure. Have you guys ever come across her in your celebrity circles? Um, <laughs> Sorry, Sins. You must have. Um, you must have. You've I have actually, I've got a great picture of me and Sunita. <laughs> I'm you? so glad that was skipped yeah. over there. Yeah. But you're going to pull a picture out of yeah. you and Sunita? Yeah. Are you? See, I, knew, I, I just knew. I knew. Yeah, but I know I met Sunita. Um, yeah, here's me here. Because I, I was I was actually naked when I met her and uh, just wearing the leaves myself. <laughs> oh, my God. You must, you must have. You have met her. Uh, He's wearing just leaves. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh my god! And you're literally spitting water over. Yeah, her. I mean that was we're totally naked. Obviously, innuendo, in bingo, bingo. Yeah. Yeah. one, yeah. But there was um, there is a picture of me somewhere, just me and her next to each other. I forgot we played that, but me just in the leaves as a nice sort of homage mm. to Sunita there. But she's a whole city fan. Wouldn't I? Didn't know no, that. No, I never knew that. Didn't know that. No. But we've been talking about celebrities, obviously supporting football clubs, and it's it's yeah. nice to just have a little um. I don't know, stock take of who's supporting who, really, on the Friday oh, pod. Uh, top of the pile, I still yeah. think we can try and push Margot Robbie, if possible, guys. Uh, for the oh, yeah. Big Fulham yeah. fan. Yeah. We, we try. <laughs> Gentle reminder there yeah. to book Margot Robbie the, for the pod, please. Yeah, the lads behind the scenes have... Uh, they, they, apparently, they've been right on the case with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Ross has been DMing her, <laughs> DMing her every day, ever since we said it. That, yeah, that's the thing, we leave it with them, but we've not questioned the booking process of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I've got shot at to think. Uh, okay, message from Joe, says, Hi lads, was browsing a charity shop in Avalon, Australia, when I came across this absolute bargain. Oh, and look at this, it's... Great. I've got one of these. How about that? Peter Crouch oh, really? t-shirt. I've got this yeah. t-shirt at home. No Abby wears way. it for bed. It was one of my finest moments when I saw Abby going to bed in this once. Seriously? Yeah, honestly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Does basically... That, oh my God. Well, it breaks it down. It's got the price yeah. of things on it. Look at that it? in the corner, yeah. So it says match ticket, £68. Flight to Milan, £110. Match program, £6. Halftime burger, £5. And then a picture of me scoring a winner in San Siro against Milan. Uh, and it says, watching Crouchy score the winner uh, against Milan and San Siro. Priceless. Wow. I love yeah, I've that. Got one, I've got one of those at home. So, so when you said Abby was wearing it, did, was, did she have the shirt or did you buy the shirt? No, someone um, gave me one because uh, they were selling them kind of, you know one of those kind of t-shirts that's outside the ground? Yeah. At uh, White Hart Lane or yeah. something. Uh, and it was just after, obviously, the, when we beat uh, East Milan in the, in the Champions League. And obviously, yeah, scoring that goal. So there's a picture of me scoring that goal with, um, with yeah, and, I, and she wore it to bed one day. And I was like, well, I was like, my life took a bad turn. <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> Who'd have thought? Yeah. That's... Obviously, you know, I used to watch Italian football, so scoring in the, in the San Siro, yeah. you know, let alone be the winner in Champions League, felt, felt amazing. Yeah, awesome, man. And now it's in a charity shop uh, in... The yes. of the world. Yeah. Well, that is a bargain in there, by the way. Well, it's made it to Australia. How good's that? Right, I've got one here. Uh, my mates convinced me to buy this shirt off the, after Mad Wakey's interview calling Cole Palmer, Cold Palmer. Turned up to footy the other day wearing it to everyone pissing themselves laughing. I think I may have had a stinker. Uh, that's from Joe. Uh, yeah, I can confirm it's a complete stinker. Yeah, because people that hasn't... People, yeah, people that haven't seen that interview that don't know that he said Cold Palmer. Or well, thinking he's, he thinks that he's named Cold Palmer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, potentially. The shirt says Cold Palmer. But he does the, he does the cold... Yeah. The, the, the celebration. celebration. So, yeah. and he's ice cold, isn't he? The, does the, it look the, just a bit, um, is it a bit uh, icky sort yes, of thing? Yes, very much so. That's kind of the thing with it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I think it's a bit of a bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, is, is this from Joe, is it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, your mate's had a bit of a mare there. Yeah. <laughs> he's had a bit of a stinker. No, he bought it. His mate convinced him. Oh, and Joe. Joe's bought it. Sorry, Joe, you've had a, you've had a stinker there. <laughs> yeah. So have I, before you've, you've delved into peer pressure there. You've caved. Right, so uh, we just love these, don't we? Uh, Susie Dent has performed again. I like leaving them, so we've not heard it. We'll be hearing <laughs> this uh, just as you'll be hearing it. Uh, Chris, do you have Susie Dent? I've got Susie Dent with another sort of football word definition. Here she Perfect. is. Hello. Uh, well, before I kick off with this week's phrase, I thought I would pick up on the email you had from Wednesday fan Steve, who asked why everybody these days, um, especially used by Clive Tilsley, I think, is um, remonstrating with the ref um, yes. instead Talks of about just it. arguing. Um, and remonstrate has meant to point something out. Uh, it's the monstrate bit, it's the same as demonstrate, uh, for centuries. Uh, but I don't think any player is simply and politely pointing something out to the ref these days. I think, to be fair, it did pick up pace in the 17th century when it meant to quite bitterly complain or protest. Um, in the 17th century history of Elizabeth I, you can read, she remonstrated the barbarous cruelty of the Spaniard. But uh, Steve is completely wow. right. It's being used more and more in football commentary, according to the databases that I've been looking at of current language. And I can't completely put my finger on why, but I suppose it sounds a little bit more sophisticated than argue and a little less pointed than harangue. Um, but it has become one of those tropes in football commentary. He's completely right. Uh, okay, so this week's phrase is the corridor of uncertainty, which oh, is, again, right. one of um, your suggestions. And you might, if you're like me, assume that it has some kind of geopolitical history, either that or some link with horror movies. Um, but it's always been connected to sport. And as you probably know, one sport in particular, which is cricket, uh, where the corridor of uncertainty is an area just outside the batter's off stump. Um, and it's often used then as a line of delivery by the bowler with the aim of leaving the batter completely unsure as to whether to play a shot. And the use of the expression is associated particularly and unsurprisingly with Geoffrey Boycott, who really popularised it in his commentary, particularly during England's 1990 tour of the West Indies, when you can see it really picking up in use. But signs are he didn't invent it because the first recorded use we have at the moment is from 1986 and a newspaper from Adelaide um, in Australia. And indeed, there are clues that the phrase might have begun there. So some suggest it began with the Australian right arm bowler Terry Alderman. But the key thing is that it soon began to spread beyond cricket, including, importantly, into football, where, um, well, you will know better than me, but it's used to describe a cross or a pass that's delivered into the area mm. in front of the goalie and behind the last line of defence. And so the uncertainty is from the decision as to who goes for the ball, Come so out. whether to defend it Come or on. leave it to the other player. I'm not sure why I'm telling you all this, because <laughs> you know it. Um, but it hasn't stopped there. Even by the early 90s, a corridor of uncertainty was being used for any situation or course of action which causes hesitation or uncertainty over how to proceed, including, as the Telegraph put it back in 2007, kissing. Um, so it says, Northerners kiss once, but often find themselves in the corridor of uncertainty, that moment of hesitation when they weigh up whether to go for a second. Uh, so I know you lot think I always go for asses or guts, but I thought I'd be a little bit different this time and just go for kissing. <gasps> she did well not to include asses or guts. And I actually thought we'd got through a whole <laughs> definition. Yeah, really, no, still mentioned them. <laughs> well... <laughs> That came, by the way, yeah. like, from absolute left field, didn't it? That was that amazing. amazing. <laughs> like, honestly, like, how good are these little, oh, are these explanations? I she's mean, that the was best. so good. She's the best. And it feels like she, she spends days researching. Research. She, she that. has described that to a T, oh, isn't she? Spot on. Absolutely. You can visually see that, like, literally where that ball's going to go across yeah, the Yeah, I mean, even the description of the, you know, of, like we say, we, we've been involved in that and talked about the corridor yeah. of uncertainty you know just where the goalkeeper wants to come out and That's doesn't it. does the defender drop and clear it or does he leave it to the goalkeeper it's that corridor of uncertainty mm, that you yeah. play the ball in as a winger uh, fantastic explanation soon yeah, can you believe brilliant. the kissing thing as well so mm. unless I misunderstood that so it, she said northerners as well in particular yeah. well yeah because I think one kiss it, yeah it's the, the kind of it's, do you go in for the double I, I, it's a minefield I don't like it at all do you think, as in fan. the polite... I'd rather just shake hands. As in, 
Yeah, but if you're trying to pull, you're not shaking their hand, are you? That's well, not no, but like, place. what? Like, you know, usually quite often you're introduced to someone's wife and you feel like you have to kiss them straight away. I just go, I just go, lovely to meet you. Yeah. I think that's easier. Whereas if you go like that and then you linger and like, she wants to go for one, and but you don't, and then you go in and you almost go on the, like, it's all I just, know, I guess it's all... a nightmare. Oh, How did you deal with all the wives over the weekend? Is... <laughs> Are you talking about, uh, uh, sorry, was that talking about like as in greeting, greeting. someone, a double kiss? A like, greeting. You see, I took it to mean as in like, let's say we, we'd we had a lovely evening together. I've taken yeah, you for that's a lovely, oh, lovely just a dinner. Kiss on the left. I've gone in to kiss Steve mm. and cheek. I've gone, no, but like, like, like if, I'm getting off with Steve, if I'm getting off with Steve, what I'm doing is I'm coming <laughs> yeah. in, just go with it a second. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is I'm... Um, I'll come You're in and give him water. like one little Show kiss. Me. But then Show really me. what I want to do is then go back Show in me. and be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> You've got to clip that up. You've got to clip that up in slow motion. No, but let's stick, let's stick to the topic. What I'm saying is you... I agree. You. So the corridor of uncertainty is whether I've given him a quick kiss on the lips, mm. right? But I want Steve. So what I've done yeah, is yeah, I've yeah. then gone back in. And that's the corridor of uncertainty. Yeah, but I think you can play that if you you can play that properly because if you do if you do the kiss and just hold for a bit, then let kind of them come to you almost like do you know what I mean. If they want to do the kiss, then it's there for them. Do you know what I mean? You, but whereas if it's you know if it's a greeting, you don't know where you are. In my opinion these days. Yeah, but yeah. what? If, so let's say you're. So what you're saying is, if you get off with someone, you go in and you've just gone gently. <laughs> I'll go for just what are you doing. <laughs> you, you, you show us. You show. Oh, you I'm show. happy I'm watching I'm you. Like, you're very like, <laughs> what I'm saying is, you, you go for one kiss, right? Yeah. So you just just test the water. You're then in the corridor of uncertainty. But, but I'm, you're saying you I'm hold saying, in go, the corridor of kiss, uncertainty. Kiss and hold. Yeah, there's no uncertainty for me. I'm hammered down. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, on that note. <laughs> <laughs>